If you have been wondering about what would the Metaverse audio platform look like, I have a guess, it may be a podcast, but it would not look like this. It would maybe look like, this is what the podcast space in the Metaverse would look like, at least my version of it. So if you are someone who's interested in making the next frontier of podcasting in Metaverse, you would like this video. In this video, we're talking with Dr. Majid Kasami, and he is the co-founder of a network called Finial Media, which is a podcast network based out of Dubai. And this is an episode that I've been waiting for a long time. They inspired me for making the podcast. They're podcast called a Yalla podcast definitely follow that as well but in this episode we talk about what does it take to build a podcast network where do you start what kind of some of the foundational pieces you need how difficult or not so difficult is the podcasting space and whether podcasting in the metaverse is something that you should be looking out for and podcasting could be the medium that stands out all that and a lot more in this video i hope you enjoy this video i'll see you at the end of the video hello and welcome to what's your coffee with ashish and today as we were talking about in the intro we're talking about podcasting, but I want to start with podcasting metaverse is my first question. But before I go into it, I've got a really good friend here, Dr. Majid Al Kasami, and uh, thank you for coming, man. Cheers! Thanks for coming with the coffee as well. Yay. Appreciate that. Uh, cheers. cheers! So, for people who don't know who Majid is, can you tell us a bit about yourself and why, what's the podcasting link that you have in your life at the moment? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the short version, um, I trained as a veterinarian professionally. Um, right. I'm from the United Arab Emirates, but my mother is German, so mixed background kid. Um, and I've, I've been over the last 10 years working in government, specifically about representing nature, environment. Um, and I spent all my career in the public sector doing biodiversity, environmental work, agriculture. Um, and I didn't realize it, but the first thing I did out of university was actually start a company in Singapore. Uh, right. It was an ag business company, yeah. And and I don't know why, and that didn't work out. I closed it down uh, about 16 months after we started. But I didn't realize I had like an entrepreneurial spirit, which I get from my, my, my grandfather on the German side. And then three years ago, I'd started a number of companies, one after the other. I like my plate full. And um, one of those happened to be uh, a podcast production company. Now, most people are like, what's a vet doing in the podcasting <laughs> media space? Um, but I realized the red thread through my whole career is, is about storytelling. And about mm -hmm. uh, typically for me, I'm telling the story of nature, the earth, bi biodiversity, and making it understood by everybody, the general public. And suddenly a good friend of mine was like, do you want to start a podcast company? This is Mashari. Um, that was really sort of, it was a no brainer. I'd spent right. actually about five years commuting and there weren't enough podcasts in the world for my commute. I was doing three hours of driving a day right. uh, wow. to go and back from work. And so it started with your typical one, Radio Lab, 99% Invisible. But then eventually when I was asked by Mashari, like, do you want to start a company? I realized, like, hold on, we don't have enough podcasts coming from our part of the world. And then it turned out in terms of Arabic speakers, which are some 400 million, we don't even have 300 podcasts, 400 podcasts wow. in Arabic. And so we started Finial Media, which is the podcast production company that we have, the network. Um, and we're like, yeah, just I jumped in. I'm here and there, whether it's on social media, whether it's figuring out business or, or how we're commercial. I mean, everything. I just got engrossed in it. And then with that and a couple other things, I mean, I for my professional career, I, I, I was with the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, and I wrote the food security strategy for the country, uh, for the UAE. Oh. and realized like there was a lot of demand now for this after corona and so i just stepped out into the private sector now i run a consultancy so now i'm a pure entrepreneur having been 10 years in the government um and yeah and it's it's super exciting uh and podcasting i think is is definitely here to stay it's the future for how we communicate and i can get into the details of why i think it's different from any other medium because i, yeah. I believe it is um uh, that's pretty awesome. yeah, that's Sorry, no, no, let, let you finish. Let you finish. No, no, that was it. Like, don't give me the whole hour to talk about. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you can take the whole hour if you like, man. But because I talking about the future, I thought it was a good segue into the question that I got, where a lot of people consider podcasts to be the audio 
source for metaverse and i guess rightly so because you look at it radio traditional radio has been part of a lot of human life for a lot of time you would hear them at construction site you hear them in the cars in yeah. just people relaxing in their office or par- having a party do you feel talking about the future and podcasting why do you believe in podcasts as a future and do you really think it would be in the metaverse okay so let's let's break that down let's talk about podcasting as a medium first of all yeah. which is what i alluded to earlier so with what we have in the 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 day to day for ourselves there's only so much time you can look at a phone right there's so much time you can look at a screen so consuming information and for me it i very much vibe with you know this kind of interaction and then listening to people talk it's it's a lot more natural there's a lot of nuance in it uh, and then ultimately not everything can be video uh, and not all video is conveying significant information um mm-hmm. the the beauty about podcasting and audio is that when you drop the visual stimuli the ears prick up your senses are super heightened and you will hear emotion you will hear when somebody is just not on it or and what i love is it deepens your sense of sort of understanding and your 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 hearing nuance and then ultimately the format for podcasting is you can get into real depth it's not a 6 second blip on social this is about like let's get into the nuts and bolts let's get into the meat and potatoes let's go deep yeah and then the beauty of conversation is tangents like you can go into some funny corners and find some real epiphanies uh and that's why i love podcasting in a, as a conversational medium like what we're doing now yeah now where is this lead us to the metaverse um if you're doing anything in whether it's crypto and nfts or metaverse and sort of vr ar this sort of blend of the world on the internet metaverse and us in real life i think what's important is to be able to share all of these learnings yeah all of the deep exploration that a lot of other people are doing in the metaverse online and i can't be sitting and watching videos all day on this i'm rather washing my brain in podcasts and conversations and people who are exploring the space and you'll see this really picked up in um that sort of half house of podcasting which is spaces or mm-hmm. the the chat rooms your clubhouses those are you know that's you walking into a room and listening to a conversation but they're not recorded yeah so the yeah. archiving of this deep conversation is podcasting It's interesting because uh, to your point about Clubhouse as well now, LinkedIn has also started their audio medium as well now, which is available mm-hmm. in the US only at the moment. But I, it's funny, <laughs> I actually thought Clubhouse would die once people start going back to work, but only going to happen so they got another uh, injection of like, hey, I give you another opportunity. Yeah. But that's my personal opinion, but because we're really interesting. Uh, we, to your point about the depth of conversation, like I feel podcast definitely is going to be always like number one in terms of audio. then yeah, they live conversation i feel like but then obviously this would depend on the preference of individuals as well and for me like i always said podcast until radio right yeah. the the idea is what we've seen in the visual medium where broadcast serial tv programming versus netflix like mm-hmm. i'm sorry i don't want to watch the show right now i want to go have dinner I'm yeah. going to come and do it on my terms and I'm going to binge it and watch 3 4 episodes and then go to bed and then I'll watch the rest tomorrow. Like it's putting the onus of control of how they consume the content in our hands and podcasts are doing the same. Yeah. I'm 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 flitting between listening to the news podcast in the morning to sometimes and then when I come home it's like a um a sort of a little bit of escapism in a sort of narrative podcast. and then sometimes i'll just find something quirky and i'll be listening to that um mm-hmm. ultimately podcasting is filling in those moments and it's funny in the, in the middle east where podcast is still sort of burgeoning medium we've yep. learned that most of the people that are consuming podcasts are filling in 20 minute slots in their day so there are people that are cooking there are people that are um sort of getting on with cleaning something or dr- commute i mean there are people who are stuck in a 3 hour commute like i was here as well and it just becomes where you can get 
bite size compared to like listening to an audiobook, but bite size information. I mean, there's only so much music you can take when you're driving. That's for right. Eight hours, that's right. right. And maybe that's a good segue into because I mean, I kind of came across yourself and your co-founder for Finial Media when you guys were doing Yala podcast. It's funny. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I, that that was my first introduction to podcasting as well. And I heard it on an Emirates flight back from London to Australia, somewhere on the, along the line. So was, you heard it on the flight. I heard it on the flight. Did you, I, know, did you not that know that was in the flight? No, you told me you listened to it. And I was like, oh, wow, he found us on the internet. Yeah. But you on the flight. So I'll tell you something. Getting us on to the airline was this like, let's get some visibility. Let's get some people to hear us. But I'm not going to lie. It has been the single most profound marketing tool for us to have people say, I heard you on the plane. I was like, really? Wow. Where you've got this whole library of movies. You picked our <laughs> podcast. Thanks. <laughs> like, yeah, it's awesome. So That's I'm, maybe I'm it could be the picture as well. Cause I imagine, uh, and it's funny. Um, it, cause I was, as I was scrolling through the list, it could be the picture of you and him picture. as well. Yeah, no, that, no, we cause did. You, cause yeah, funny, we're in the it. room. We're in the room where we took that picture. Really? Door. We threw so literally like a super bare, like this is startup life. We threw a sheet over a door. We stood in front of it. We got somebody to take photo of us making really funny faces. And to give your audience some context, Yalla in Arabic is Yalla, let's go. It's like, it's a sort of Baba, like, Baba, like the same Baba, exactly. That's a good, yeah. exactly. Um, and why we picked Yalla was we were starting the company and we wanted to create more content. So a little bit of background. Nashar and my co-founder had Millennial Mirrors, which was a podcast he was running alone. But then when he wanted to expand, he realized he needed a company. And that's why he reached out to me. But Yalla was our first foray as a company in podcasting. It was, and then taking cues from Gimlet, the US-based podcast company, it's like, let's tell our startup story. And that's what Yalla was about. And we did 10 episodes of us starting the, the, the company and all the, the challenges of ups and downs and then getting to fundraising. Um, and I, still one of my favorite things to do. That podcast was hilarious. Yeah, it is. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's funny how there's such a how large, uh, vulnerable moment, but at the same time, cultural moments as well, where you, uh, I think you, well, there was one episode I remember where you played it to your friends and they gave you guys feedback. Oh, the first episode. Oh my God. No, my wife was there. And oh, she yeah. was just literally, she cut us up. She's like, why are you pronouncing all your names like American citizens? Like, why was this uh, this English that I have that yeah. I grew up with watching TV? She's like, your name's not Majid Al Qasimi, it's Majid Al Qasimi, and I was like, you, you're right. Like, we're we're really we need to keep our identity in this. And so yeah, it was, and I love that experience because there's things you're not thinking about. Because me and Mashari sound like this yeah. like, <laughs> American dudes talking about Yalla, let's go, um, and it's like okay. No, you're, you're both Arabs. You're both from, yeah. you know, the Gulf. Let's accept the identity, right? And I think... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Media, yeah, isn't it? Gimlet Media is an interesting one, because a lot of people may not even know what Gimlet Media is. Mm -hmm. So if you can probably share why that company was an inspiration for you guys for Yala Podcast and making this whole podcast network as well. It was a number of things. One, I was consuming Gimlet's content. Uh, right. Startup as a series was amazing. And... It was almost, I mean, I would say it was inspirational in, in the fact that this was a new foray for podcasting. It was, let's take this seriously. It's not a hobby. It's not another sort of thing I do on the side, but they're like, we're going to create a company and we're going to create some profitability out of it. And we're going to make this a global phenomenon. Yep. Um, and in that, we wanted to take the spirit of what Gimlet was trying to do. And here's a little tidbit as well. A gimlet is a small drinking glass, right? I'm sure if yes. somebody like looks it up, it's a gimlet of like, I don't know what liquor, what spirit you drink out of it. Okay. But finial, finial is the small coffee cup. Okay. In Arabic proper, it's finjan. So F-I-N-J-A-N in English, if you want to spell it. But right. here, the dialect for the United Arab Emirates, finial is what we call it. And it's like a very large thimble that you drink Arabic coffee out of. So Finial Media versus Gimlet oh, Media. Oh, well, there, you da -da -da -da. there you go. Oh, wait. So, so but that's because coffee, we tell so stories. When you go to a coffee cup, like when you go to a cafe in, in UAE, you would no, say, "Oh, no, I want no, Finial." No. Okay, you, no, 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 you won't. You will. You will only find the Finial in a traditional home, in an Emirati home, 
and they will serve that. Or if you go into a hotel or a uh, or a majlis, like like a which is a uh, I don't want to call it a lounge, but it's basically where people um, or families will welcome people, and it's right. traditionally they serve this coffee. It's the same in this in Saudi Arabia and. People will serve this coffee. Although the Emirati coffee is different from the Saudi coffee, the way we oh, prepare it. We can get into that. But the, the yeah. whole idea is because we tell stories and we're an oral history culture, we tell stories over coffee. And the whole premise was we used to drink coffee, we talk, and and so bite-size stories, I'm sort of small stories, small coffees, blah, they like it plays on on itself. Yeah. That is pretty awesome. And I'm glad you mentioned it as well. So now at least I know the story behind why it was called Finial Media as well. Yeah, exactly. But it's almost interesting as well, because you know how, I guess you have multiple shows on Finial Media now. So mm -hmm. And when I heard Yalla podcast that you guys were, like that was the only podcast you had. There was nothing else. And the, the whole yeah, story yeah, yeah. is about how you got funded and all that. And I'll definitely encourage the viewers to kind of go and listen to the entire uh, season. The yeah. interesting it's funny. thing yeah it's hilarious like it definitely keeps you engaged the entire time and to think that there's actually not much audio you know how nowadays the podcasting is all about the music what's in the background yeah yeah tense moment none of that shit. speaking of the music the music for yalla i wrote the the jingle yeah yeah I, yeah. Well. I, I dabble in music i like i'm a musician as well and my, right my right hobby, but like i wrote the music but it's true like when you say it, it's it's very not raw it's raw rude. it's like it's like you have the jingle and then we start talking and that's it yep. there's no background stuff yeah yeah because all the, all the podcasts these days is all about hey uh, how do i uh create this suspense moment for the person who's listening in like for just like a suspense song or you're creating some more emotional tension yeah 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 and none of that very simple but it connects it's, it was almost like listening to two friends having this journey that they're sharing and i was telling uh, my co-producer as well if if i ever get an opportunity because I, I drink a piccolo or a cortado I, I now i'm gonna make, name it cortados now because i think it's like i love the yeah that's it <laughs> i'm definitely that's gonna use cortado. that as a name sorry yeah that's cool i like it uh, cortado is a nice nice name for a podcast and this is <laughs> this is my cortado for the morning oh there you go perfect so maybe let's talk about the journey then so you guys started yalla mm -hmm. you got some funding and you started having you had a ceo and i'll start the whole thing as well towards the end yeah. of it what were some of the challenges that you guys came across growing a business considering you said you started a business in singapore before which you had to shut down obviously i'm assuming lessons from that came into this as well yes. but yeah, yeah, yeah. what are some of the interesting challenges that kind of when you look back and like that that come to your mind but one of one of one of my favorite was when we um when we started uh Mishar and i were obviously trying to produce content and trying to make sure we had <clears throat> that we had something to showcase i mean we need a show and so we yeah. were doing english uh, uh podcasts he had millennial mirrors and i had Finial media but our, our our sort of instinct was that's great but we're trying to address an arabic market their arabic listeners out there that don't have podcasts and we we really need to produce something for them so that we also a bit more true to our identity and the joke is both Mishai and I have very like Mishai has better Arabic than me and I have very poor Arabic so we can't do an Arabic podcast <laughs> <laughs> so we're like okay what, what do we do and then Mishai was like you know I, I've always wanted to do a sort of classic Arabic narrative but modernize it or at least bring it forward right and yeah. and make it more contemporary um and so we were like okay so what what is the sort of quintessential arabic story and that's a thousand and one nights that's right everyone knows right? it is it is everybody knows it it is canon for orientalism the middle east and what have you as what was fantasy and i remember yeah. my 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 wife used to read it as a child Wow. And she says it would take you to places you never thought existed. Um, and so Mishar is like, cool, you know what I'm going to do? I'll, I'll go and buy. And here's the irony as well is like, well, it's it's not licensed to anybody. There, nobody ho holds the rights to A Thousand and One Nights. Really? No, it's like, oh, it, it's, I... it's not copyrighted. <laughs> okay. so, <clears throat> so we just bought the books in Arabic and Mashari yeah. began to read them to be able to turn, you know, create the show. 
Um, and then what happens is he gets to page three and he goes, this stuff is R rated. We can't tell this story. Oh, really? <laughs> so the original story in Arabic is very um, sexualized. There's a lot of debauchery, if you want to put it that way. Wow. And so he's like, whoa, we have to rewrite this. And so we did make it very sort of contemporary. We brought the female character into the story as a lead, as opposed to you know, the sidelines and sort of sort of gender balancing and yeah. um, as well told the story in a more neutral way. And, and we did it with really good quality audio, a good narrator and good voice actors. And we picked a beautiful artwork and a story and we sort of elevated. And I think this was the other thing is it, we were adamant that we would not compromise on quality. We did not want to be a Arabic podcast that just tried to keep, no, no, we're going to rival Gimlet, Wondery, all of them. Yeah. And when we put it out there, we, and this is maybe the other challenge that we dealt with. One was how do you produce a show in Arabic when you don't speak Arabic? Mashar has gotten really good at uh, sort of script writing and, and more, not script writing so much, editing and, and quality control. But we managed to cobble that together with funds and get that out. But when you've got a podcast that's good, you're hoping to actually make some revenues from it. Of course. And it yeah. was funny, this was way back with, with Yalla, actually. I was sat there, Layla was already on board, and between the three of us, we were like, cool, so we've got podcasts. Yeah, yeah. And Layla's business modeling and everything, she's writing up to this, and Mashar is going, here's a script. And, and I'm sitting there, I'm going, okay. I tried using Excel, and Mashar's like, don't do that, you're not going to do that. I'm like, cool. My lesson from the experience. But then they were like, how are we going to sell this actually? Like, how do you sell podcasts? And I turned around and I preface this, everybody. I, I'm a big Gary Vee fan right? Nice. In, in the practicality of the way he is. And I turned around and was like, guys, it's simple. We cold call everybody. We just crunch that phone. And the dread that was on their face, both Leila and Michelle, like, call strangers and try to sell our product. And it like, I had this like euphoria. I was like, that's my role here. And I literally, <laughs> I literally went through my role. I'm like, who do I know? And who do I want to know? And I literally, I spent, um, and that was a big lesson for us is like sales, like hardcore sales. For anybody who's listening to this, who's in sales, mad respect to you. There's a lot of disciplines on how one does sales, but ultimately to call somebody up, try to make them your friend, charm them and say, hey, I've got something interesting I'd like you to look at. Um, and our first sale, I won't forget, um, is this goat, bar, goat soap that we had from Peninsula Farms out in Bahrain. So CEO, Rashid, super cool dude, loves podcasting, by the way. He's super, I love what you're doing. And it sounds like, look, Rashid, I'm going to go out on a limb. If there's anything you can do for us, anything and if you really want to support us it doesn't have to be much but a little bit we'd be really proud to be able to have you as our first sort of sponsor advertiser and sure yeah. enough he's like look i don't have much i got a thousand dollars i'll put to our camp i was like i'll take it give us the product you've got all of yalla and we plastered it all over the show yeah. and yeah man and that's it and then you just learn to rinse and repeat and you start talking bigger amounts bigger shows bigger what happened now to bring it full circle a thousand and one nights the idea is you're trying to sell impressions right yep. so we go out we reach out to a big chain here and we say oh it's ramadan and thousand and one nights is always sort of associated with ramadan and, and the sort of seasonal show yep. and we said look we're gonna put this out we can sell you for x amount thirty thousand impressions in three months mm -hmm. Okay, like we'll we'll do thirty thousand impressions in three months, and that'll be the contract. And then we release the show to be able to be sponsored by somebody else. And yeah. this is us being like super conservative. Um, actually, we were hoping we'd get thirty thousand. We weren't getting thirty thousand. <laughs> yeah. And by day seven, we cleared thirty thousand. Whoa! And we were looking at each other like we totally undersold the show. Oh my god. Like we're doing a mate and the, just the, the numbers were just doing this. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Awesome experience. 
it is still our top show. We're in season four. Um, and yeah, it just, it was for us, it was the litmus test that this whole region just wanted Arabic content and it wasn't available. And because it's so family friendly and we had the season of Ramadan, it just got eaten up and shared like crazy and, and it's been ama amazing. Right. So wait, so the, the impression that you got, this is without advertising. This is just, you guys just talking about it to people. Just, so here's the thing. We were, we were, we put the show out, but then we also, because there was so little in terms of Arabic podcasting, it just became a blip on the iTunes store. Oh. And that just picked it up and just, and so the whole region, like we have listeners from as far as Egypt. Wow. And Saudi Arabia. And we just number one, boom, boom, consistently. Um, yeah, and we were super proud of that. That's our crowning achievement as a show. That's right there. Quintessential Arabic narrative, telling that story and just getting it out to the, the wider world. Okay, so what, what made you guys, obviously it sounds like you had a great success with the Arabic, uh, uh, Arabian Nights. What made you guys go, hey, we need more shows? Well, business model. <laughs> 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 Fair enough. <laughs> there's, there's the business model. So we, we started the company not as a podcast, but as a podcast network. Right, and right. And what had happened was we beginning. Were, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. And, and in terms of scaling and understanding the sort of impressions against sort of listens, it's literally what Gimlet and all the other podcasting shows are trying to do. And because they have the US market, there's this ubiquitous English speaking audience that they're trying to capture. And that's why it's very competitive in the US and the other you know, English speaking countries. But um, what, what happened with, with this region is we, we encountered two things. One, Arabic is spoken differently in terms of dialect across the Arab world. And we're talking like 400 million people. It's not, I mean, like, you take Egypt, which is a huge population, all the way across to Oman here in the Gulf, the yep. Arabian Gulf, and you've got all of these countries between like Tunisia, Morocco, so North North Africa, and the Middle East, all speaking Arabic, but in different dialects. So we realized there was a challenge in if you did what's called fusha, which is the traditional classical Arabic, it becomes very stiff. And we told a thousand and one nights in a sort of softer classical Arabic. So everybody could understand it. But when you're trying to like connect with people emotionally, create some sort of narrative that's closer to them, you have to start peaking, speaking or picking a dialect. That's right. Now there is in the news circuit and radio, what's called Lahja Beba, which means the white um, accent or the white dialect, right. meaning it's, 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 it's not here nor there. It's just very soft. Um, and we tried that and then ultimately we started picking dialects and we started creating shows like um we have a shafra which actually is about four saudi gamers that join a new game that's being launched by a saudi developer that has an ai built in as your sort of companion through the whole i mean like this the writing team that we have between mashari and omar who's a phenomenal they are like me we are nerds, we love modern fantasy sci-fi, and we put that into our own content. Um, nice. And the joke is, you know, Arabic doesn't have much sci-fi, and so we're creating a lot of new IP. But the premise here is we start doing new shows because we want to A, offer more for the audience, give them options, variety, find segments. So as a, as a, as a network, you have to understand if you're trying to sell podcasts, and audiences, you need to be able to segment them. It, like a thousand and one nights is family friendly, so it's a very broad spectrum. We've got Al Qabu. Al Qabu was a, which means the basement, is a drama thriller based in Egypt. Right. So the demographic is predominantly Egyptian, with a little bit of Saudi, because you have people that kind of consume that content in Arabic. We have shows that are very Imamati focused. And so we start creating, and ultimately, if you're trying to grow your audience, for us as a network, shows are a sort of springboard for listenership. And you have cross-pollination between shows and you've just grown. And we're at like, I think we've crossed 9 million now. Wow. Um, as, a, as a portfolio of like 14 shows. But the idea is every time we put a show out, we learn, we get more audience, we get more engagement we find what works and what doesn't work. And I'll tell you, there've been enough shows we have killed, like just right, okay. right, like boom. Yeah. 
Um, and it's just about learning data. Like we just have to, I mean, it's, a, those shows aren't cheap to produce, but they're a lot cheaper than heavy video production and stuff like that. And I've been rambling. I'm going to give you a, no, 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 a you're chance right. to ask. Yeah. That's actually making me uh, uh, ask a few qu questions that came to my mind mm -hmm. as well. In the 14 shows that you created, I'm always mm -hmm. curious because from what you guys started in Yala, which is just you and your co-founder, yeah. you guys, well, all right, let's put this together. Take a, take a, put a sheet on our door, take a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully it works yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, but to building a podcast network from day one, because I yeah. think from memory, when I remember from Yellow Podcast, you already had the CEO in mind. You were already looking for funding. Yeah, uh, who later became there, there was all that that was going on. That's yeah. spoken yeah, about yeah, the yeah. podcast journey. And I'll ask you already to definitely go through that. What's involved in, I guess, building a podcast network? Now with 14, I, I guess, starting from one show all the way scaling so, up okay, to that yeah. show. So in terms of a content strategy, um, we made a very conscious choice to lead, lean into narratives. Right? right. So we were looking at the space and there was uh, another company who's doing almost like radio lab type sort of very highbrow docu docu edutainment kind of stuff. And we're like, we don't want to double down on that. If there's an offering already in the market for that, we don't need to try and compete with them. There's plenty to be had. Yep. So one show we tried to do uh, called Akhbarak, meaning your news would have been like a news summary show where what we did is we got a young host, somebody who's almost like um, some of these YouTube news shows where on camera, hey, what's up, la, 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 la. We tried to do two takes. We didn't even get through one episode, I think, and it just didn't gel. Sort of right. we needed to produce a the news in a significant way, and the host needed to be flexible, and we didn't find that person. And there was no drive, and rather than spend money, and then we were trying to do it in video as well, and just didn't pan out. We were just like, kill that immediately. Another show we tried is sports. So we're like, football is really big here. Let's get a couple of hosts. Now, they didn't want to do it of their own volition. And as we we're a company, we were paying them a sort of like minimum fee yeah. for them to host the show once a week. And I think we got some like 10 episodes out of that. Right. And then we did a spinoff where one of the guys would do us like a, a bonus episode midweek, which was a fantasy football um, sort of like soccer placements and who he's watching and where he thinks yep. he's going to score and it just it wasn't hitting the numbers we've seen with our other shows and that got axed as well and it wasn't our forte but when we did storytelling Mashari is very deep in sort of storytelling um he's also a heavy D, &D player so Dungeons and Dragons for those who yep. don't know and so this sort of like narrative building storytelling is very important and sort of the emotional aspect of that and so we went from a thousand and one nights to say okay what's another quintessential arabic folklore and we're like juha juha is a, like a aesop's fables for the arab world and the right. turkish have him as well and so we started to do that and in the writing of that we thought okay let's take again these are royalty free stories it's folklore everybody knows them let's take those stories and write them into arabic but rather than have juha be the character that's sort of the mainstay his donkey gets a voice and he is the narrator and he's always like oh this juha he's like i'm telling the story of all of the 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 sort of like mistakes and the learnings and all of this wisdom and etc cetera, etc cetera. that took off as well and I have to give it to um, the team, the way it was written. And so we have to hire writers. Um, it's got a lot of comedy element in it. It's family yeah. friendly again. But our donkey character is literally donkey from Shrek. It's like, it's, it's at that level. Like he's got, he's become like, not notorious. He's just, everybody loves him. He's funny. He's just got real comic sense of timing. And like, I'm, we were discussing the other day, like we need to build merch around this character. He's just that <laughs> big. And that one, two, and so these are very traditional. And then Mashari is like, I want to take our stories a lot more contemporary. He's like, let's bring more of the thematics forward. And so what we did was, um, we did Sindibad. Yeah. Again, this was a Th Thousand One Nights spinoff because yeah. in the stories of A Thousand One Nights, you tell the story of Sindibad and Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. That's right. Sindibad came came out as an adventure story. And then instead of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, we just called it the 40 Thieves. And the story was about his daughter, Alibaba's daughter. Now, 
think about like a Kill Bill revenge series oh. where she's a young adult, her father's been murdered by one of the 40 thieves and he's she's out there to take each one out. And so every episode is her trying to basically chase these guys down and take them out a la Assassin's Creed kind of style. Interesting. And to do that. So it's been really, really cool. Oh, so to your point then, from a team perspective, so you had a writer, obviously, yeah. you had a co-founder as a writer as well. Uh, you probably need like a video audio editor as well. Like I think, I'm assuming there's a large team behind this as well now. Like what kind of roles do you see? I'm thinking from audience members who may have a podcast network in mind, but what kind of roles do you need like you mentioned the sales part earlier as well. So it sounds like you need a sales guy as well, or guy or girl. Yeah, so so I'll tell you the way we the way we broke it up was from the production side, yes, you do need strong audio capabilities. And what we did was in the end was we ended up with one building a good engineering team or, or like a production team. So like we have somebody who does because we couldn't hire this full team because of the costs, what we did is we hired writers. We quality controlled the scripts. We were happy with the scripts. We then had actors if needed or narrators uh, yeah. as needed. And then all of that recording would be done with a production engineer. And that production engineer would build out the show until we were ready. Right. Um, so depending on how big or complex the cast is, how many people you need, I'd say essentially, like yourself, you've got a host who's on the show. And somebody who's doing the back end, which is the audio stuff. And you can do this yourself. I mean, a lot of people yeah. do solo podcasting. Um, but because we're doing like elaborate, high quality narratives, the resources for that grow. You need a lot more. Yeah. And the truth is with sales, we did it as founders. We just got out there and we plowed through and we called people. And I think that did a lot for being able to sell it because if there's one thing about podcasting and you'll, you'll know this from any sort of niche industry, if you're not, um, if you're not, be, if you're not able to convey the passion behind this new medium, it becomes hard to get a sales. You're not selling widgets. They're not going like they need 20 of these. They're great. Um, and if there's no emotion, and I'll say this, all of our sales up until, um, say mid year last year were actually predominantly finding people on the other end who were podcast consumers who were just as passionate as us that understood it and driving home the emotional beacon like like just like this is this is why this is this is a lot of people yeah. want to take analytics and start making comparisons to social and i'm like you're doing apples and oranges yeah and i know big companies have requirements and marketing has to be done a certain way but what you're trying to do and i always believe this with podcasting it's a long play to build strong brand equity with your listener. Mm -hmm. This is the add value. This is the plus plus that people are going to be like, I like the brand. That's great. Or it's interesting what they do, but I know the host. I know the host, right? People yeah. are like, I know that like they build an emotional attachment to, to knowing every week their favorite host for the favorite sort of cybersecurity show is going to be on. And they're like, Man, I'm just going to I'm like Ashish is that I'm going to hang with Ashish and his guest today. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But that's that's how that works, right? Yeah. Um, and and I think when you hone into that, you're going to build a lot more with listeners. And then you'll know this from a lot of the American podcasting scene. You know all the brands that were doing. If it was Squarespace or Casper mattresses, or there are brands that just blanketed those shows. Yeah. Mailchimp. Yeah, but that's how that worked. You knew that who you were loyal to was associated with these people, and that loyalty to bridges. And uh, I don't, I don't think brands here understand that yet. They're no. still looking for a tit for tat exchange. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's the nature of this industry. Where we were really early. I've always said we are so far ahead of the curve. It might be working against us, but that's how it is. It's really interesting, man. And to your point about the podcasting space in different niches as well. I think even from a cybersecurity podcast perspective as well, because they're all trying to match it to the other things that they've seen to your point. They expect it. Oh, I should be talking to MailChimp. But yes, my MailChimp may have something technical, but do it. Do they really want a cybersecurity? I don't think they want a cybersecurity. They, they don't want it. I mean, yes, we're secure, 
But the last yeah. thing I want is like all the cybersecurity people just going, oh, I want MailChimp because MailChimp is so awesome. <laughs> like I'm sure it is. It, for people it's, you know it. what it is? You're, you're, you're putting your finger on a really good point as well is matching the, the, the sponsor or the advertiser to the show content or to your demographic. So knowing who, who, who's listening, right? Yeah. I, yeah. in my spare time as a hobby, I do woodworking. And when right. you're on a woodworking podcast, the brands that are trying to reach out there are the power tool guys, the, oh, yeah. the, the niche tool guys, the, the people that have new products in that space. And that's clear, that's right. you know, audience association. Yeah. That's like, this is, they're the people who will now get off this podcast and look for the product or Google it while they're listening. That's right. right. Versus, you know, the, the more generic, like, and I think this was the challenge is podcasts are on the web. And so everything on the web was, we were like, oh my God, let's go find like web companies that want to advertise here. And it didn't, didn't pan out as easy. Um, no. And so you have to do the work to find, we make uh, lists of people we want to reach out to that might be viable sponsors. Um, because if you just grab any big company, like put your, put your content on our, or rather your brand on our podcast, like even your audience would be like, well, why is this on here? <laughs> I didn't realize they were into, I mean, and so this is the, the work. And so, yeah, you have yeah, to kind of pre funny. curate that list. I've still got an idea because I, I done the podcast that I do has the virtual coffee with Ashish thing. So I still have an idea where I want to have my own coffee bean and offer that as a thing as well. So to, to your point, it's a loose association because I would ask a guest to get a drink. I always have a coffee with me. So people associate that with themselves. So if I were to advertise a coffee company and it just happens to be Ashish's coffee because called Ghost Rider or whatever, uh, sponsors below so, if anyone wants to reach out. <laughs> so, so it's funny you say that. Like, I think that's actually good because that's a that's a, a an adjacent, right? You that's will right. every episode be talking about coffee. And as yep. you asked me earlier in the green room, like, what are you drinking? And I'm like holding it up to the screen. Like, that's the that's the pitch. That's if right. You just reach out to coffee sponsors and be like, hey, I'm in the tech space. Everybody's drinking coffee till like 4 a.m. Can you put? Do you want to sponsor? you know, the show and I'll have a bag. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like, Hey, today I'm drinking so-and-so this is that's right. Yeah. That's how you pitch that. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. hundred percent. I'm just trying to and find And then out. you build your own coffee brand and then you pitch that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ultimate goal is to build a cafe, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one day. <laughs> cafe, which no, is, no, uh, but that's the build, right? Yeah. 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 So you start, you start with other people's coffee on your show that you start learning how to get your own. Maybe you have a, your own roast by, a company and you say look the deal is we have the coffee we can share the the revenues yeah and this will be the coffee that i'm drinking and i will always point to it you'll always get the brand on the, the front of the video and 100 pam, 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 and then you've got your coffee shop and then you can just always do work in a coffee shop oh yes one, one day man i'm opening a coffee shop in dubai as well so i'll, I'll definitely invite you in. yeah man bro <laughs> I, hold on speaking of companies i've exited coffee is super political and super difficult here it is super saturated really like we're very competitive very competitive for like coffee get in edge rates yo look i know melbourne's big but we're yeah. catching up really oh okay we, we, yeah, we yeah, definitely yeah. talk about that off air as well then yeah, uh, yeah, yeah for sure. talking more about podcasting then uh i've got a few questions and i'm just yeah. conscious of your time as well it's almost like um uh, Good to hear the progression you had from one show and I guess mm -hmm. thinking about the team that would get behind making 14 shows and how you kind of yeah. like, it's almost like a natural progression you had because that, yeah. that strong narrative focus that you had for the kind of podcast. Obviously, uh, I, I also feel for people who may be listening, they might be going, mm -hmm. what do you think are things that you feel are important for a podcast network to be successful? Because I think you pointed out really nicely that when uh, there was this initial conversation, I'm going to make the script, this is model in like, hey, how are we making money? Just kind of curiosity. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> speaking about making money, um, I think one thing that we do to offset the cost of our own shows until we sell okay. them away, because that's money up front to produce show, is that we actually provide a sort of turnkey solution for companies. And we'll go to a company and be like, cool, you can try and do it in-house, but actually we'll execute like fluidly. We know exactly. And what we do is we bring our expertise to the table. So yep. Mashari does formatting and programming and understanding as well, pitching ideas. So we'll 
for instance, we do one of the largest banks here. We do their podcast. Right. And we do, we do two of the, the, the two podcasts that they have. We do them. And the premise there is we went in, we pitched, but we also told them like, okay, what is your marketing like strategy for the next year? And we brought them a couple of ideas. And one of them was literally one-on-one on, you know, finance, you know, personal finance. And they were like, yeah, we're trying to reach out to customers to help them manage their own money. And we're like, super, let's get a really charming host who has no idea about how to do his own finances and throw him in the middle of the bank. And he will meet different department heads and have conversations about what one should think about, you know, how do you do savings? How do you do investments? How do you do? And that like kicked off and they were super happy with that. And we were in, um, I think third season now, fourth season to start. And then the other one was they came back to us and they were like, we're really liking this, but we want now something for all the people who are in the markets to talk about where the markets are going. And we're like, cool. And so we were like, this is a format that you could do, which is sort of short and brief updates narrated by your head of investments. And so he comes in once a week and gives literally a short blurb on where he thinks things are moving, you know, with yeah. a small hosting sort of premise and we delivered that as well and that aside from the cost of execution are pure fuel to continue to generate for the rest of our shows oh so 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 to your point then for a successful podcasting you obviously need to have your well i wasn't going to use the word business model but more like revenue streams i guess which is yeah, not just it's literally about revenues and when you're not making revenues out of content you're producing you need to find some and so what we did was we decided to create a service as well um, and that's in, in the early parts of the business model where we want to trade that out. And then hopefully when we've got volume in our listenership from our own content, we can sell that. That's when you can start pushing the different levers back and forth where you can pull because the service for, um, for third parties isn't scalable. Right. Yeah. But it's, if we have like content that's doing really that well, point. pardon? It's like, is it like a consulting company at that point where your, your limitation is the number of people? It, yes, exactly. Limitation is the number of people or how many people you can execute with and how many clients come through the door. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, unless you have a contract, that's the limitation you have. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And so to your point then, uh, like the different kind of revenue model in a podcast could be, you could be making a podcast for other clients because based on what you've learned and kind of have a, so I'll give you the, I'll show. give you the three obvious ones at the moment. And we do all three. One is you create content and then you sell advertising on it. Um, depending on which industry and where you are in the world, post COVID has been pretty difficult here with advertising and as is sort of globally, I think digitally, because mm -hmm. everybody's on the back foot, hopefully 2022 changes, but that's one you create content up front and then you advertise. If the content is your own marketing material, all the better, but we're narrative based storytelling. So it's a bit different. Secondly, Podcasting as a service, sort of a turnkey solution. Third party wants to do a podcast. They don't want the headache. They call you, Ashish, Ashish, can you just do the podcast for me? Mm -hmm. You can say, cool, here's the format. I'll give you sort of what I know about the industry. Um, if you want to hit YouTube, we'll just put a couple cameras. Here's the cost for equipment, service, hours, and delivery and hosting. Yeah. You turn that out. And then yeah. the last one is if you do have content and you want to put it behind a paywall, so a subscription model, and we're on iTunes as a, as a subscription. And so you can continue to do that. Uh, and then if there's another way, somebody let us know, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we should probably find out. Yes, that's right. Uh, cause I think now, even with, um, something that I've seen in other podcasts, I don't know if you noticed this, but, uh, kind of like what's it called? iHeartRadio, whatever. Yeah, and there yeah. other platforms like that, what they have started doing. And I don't know how they're doing it. Cause I listened to a few podcasts. Uh, around investments on on Spotify, even though I'm paying for mm -hmm. Spotify, I still get ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how the oh, hell wait. am I getting? Yeah. Wait, so... hold on. Are those in in podcast ads or? Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's but... different. It's not Spotify's ads specifically. It's the ads from the podcast. Yeah, but they're almost like two layers. It's almost like a meta level, for lack of a better word. What happens is yeah. these guys are sponsored by McDonald's. These guys will be sponsoring. They're talking like they will be saying McDonald's something. Rah, 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 yeah. And yeah, in yeah. the middle. Right in the middle, there would be something which is super localized. It's a Melbourne ad that comes in. It's an American podcast. It's super in the middle. I'm like, how the oh. hell did it know? 
Hold and on, then that, the, that ad would finish and then they, oh, then the McDonald ad continues. So obviously the podcast host doesn't know about it, but they're- That's called, no, you need to, there's two things. One, they may have put a programmatic, uh, so sort of the trick with the back end now is you've got these time marks. And when you put a time mark in, automatically on the day when you listen to a podcast, it can be localized and targeted. And oh. so the ad gets put in. Interesting. So what we do is we have these timestamps where we throw it up and we have campaigns running in the back end. So depending on what day of the week it is, depending on which month, where you are, the ad will slot itself in and you can do that geographically and through time and over. Really? Like so we have, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. So podcasting platforms provided or do we have to- sign Yes, up platforms, like your back end. So I, we use Libsyn. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so Lipson has this where every season I've had of a uh, thousand one nights, and that's four seasons. This is three years of work. We'll all have the current ad. We don't bake them in, which is put the ad into the audio. They don't have any ads, but we make time stats where we know this is where the ad will be slotted in by the, the service provider. Yeah, you should look that up. By the way, that I was gonna look that. I'm gonna look that up now. Yes, it's like mm, and you've I'm learned something. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I yeah. should, you shouldn't be charging me for this, but <laughs> don't worry, man. We just want the whole ecosystem to grow. Oh, that's right. Now I appreciate that, and I, I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of do all this as well. Well, um, and uh, one last question before we kind of wrap up. Um, now, since you've done the podcasting for some time, um, mm -hmm. being starting from a vet and now becoming like a almost like a podcast network uh, business owner, you, what would your advice be to that Majid who was starting the Yala podcast day one, taking a picture outside the uh, outside his door with, uh, let's make a funny face, take mm -hmm. a picture. So what would your yeah. advice be to that young Majid? <sighs> <laughs> so much advice to give, huh? <laughs> I think the advice I'd give myself and I'd give any podcaster is that it's, it's a long game, right? It is, it's, it's not going to pay back as, as quick as you hope. Mm. Right. And that's not to discourage anybody, but for everybody to think you need podcasting as a business is really hard because you have to do a lot of other stuff than just record a podcast. Oh yeah. You know, audio engineering, the back end, and even you, you're like, what? I can digitally I can just slot in ads. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um yes, this is the this is the technology up to speed now. Um, but ultimately what you need to figure out is what are you doing that's gonna give you clout on the podcast? Right? Podcasting for podcasting's sake is is too niche and too bizarre. Like you are in cybersecurity, right? You've got your pillar, your depth. Yeah. So when yep. you do a podcast in your niche, it's super relevant because everybody wants to hear all of that. But That's if you right. just want to, you know, doing an interview podcast really comes down to you being a good interviewer. And if you've got a, a nice selection of interesting guests, that might be something. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to tone down maybe your expectations. It's, it, it's especially in English speaking um, geographies, it's yeah. very competitive and then remove geographies. Just the English speaking market for podcasting is very, very competitive. Oh yeah. So yeah. actually I'd say maybe pick a niche, right? If, you, if there's another language you can podcast in, that might be super relevant. That might be super interesting, but have your thing yeah. and do the podcasting as part of your marketing, as part of your outreach, as part of your archiving information, as your sort of thought leadership. For instance, my day-to-day -day consultancy is doing a podcast now. We're just, right working up to, to executing that. And that's, we realized threefold. One, my partner and I do a lot of our thinking aloud in discourse. So it's oh, yeah. actually a natural medium for us to come up with ideas. And from that, who we interview, we will come with takeaways that can become white papers, research, um, or reports that we can write, and even social media posts that double not only as marketing, but as continued thought leadership in our space. And it's an, it's an engine really to get us to do stuff, but it's not our mainstay work. Like our work is to go and consult and advise governments, private sector on food security and sustainability. Yep. But you're building so an ecosystem as well. And, and this is it. And it's, and it's a place for that ecosystem to come together.
That's pretty awesome, man. I think, uh, so uh, maybe final question. So have a pillar. My question. advice is stick with your pillar and drive a podcast out of that. As a network, it's also, you know, have your niche. Yeah, and then to your point, build the uh, coffee bean, or the, brew the coffee bean and build the cafe after that. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. And, step by and step. Be, be realistic with your business model. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so what's next for Vinyl Media? Hey, look, man, it's 2022. We really want to grow um, into... This year is about making a real big decision with, with the network on how we expand. Um, we're, we, we know we have incredible line of shows that we've created our audience is asking for more and i think on a fundraising perspective um this next few months is going to be critical so keep your fingers crossed everybody good luck i would definitely be following you very closely uh, awesome uh, that, was, that was great uh, amazing advice as well and i'm pretty sure a lot of people would be really interested to kind of start a podcast maybe even podcast network like probably finial gimlet and maybe another acronym which we can come up with a small coffee yeah, yeah. <laughs> small coffee <laughs> podcast in, company <laughs> yeah that's right in, a, in another, another language maybe even german for that matter Cortado media <laughs> yeah Cortado media maybe <laughs> actually now i'm gonna steal that one now since i kind of came out loud huh so, Cortado. i don't know if anybody has anybody has nice, that like but to your point, um, so for people who may want to reach out to you and maybe talk about podcasting or maybe from some of our Arabic following as well, they have not heard. Where can they find Finial Media? Where can they connect with you? What's, what's the Twitter, uh, social like? Uh, uh, we are, uh, yeah, this is Finial Media. So that's F-I-N-Y-A-L. We're on Instagram as, uh, get that right now. Watch Finial, Finial underscore Media, spot. I think. No, it's a single word. F-I-N-Y-A-L media media or media. Then, um i can hear uh, the next meeting coming up for me and then on twitter i'll put them on the, are... on the uh, description as well so people can find out as well man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and then uh, and i think uh, your uh, handle yeah. is on the screen as well so i think that would be yes uh, exactly you can definitely that's, find find that, that's your instagram handle though right no that is my twitter handle my oh, instagram right, handle so... is without uh the underscore Sweet, but uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me and I'll definitely put them in the description as well. Thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate yeah, this. Yeah, buddy. This is, I'm glad we can make it happen. Sorry it took so long, but uh, yeah. This no, that's awesome. all right. Really appreciate I'm it. so glad you did it. I am super grateful. I'm looking forward to having a uh, coffee with you one day in person. I'm looking forward yeah. to having your coffee one day. So Oh, no pressure. <laughs> <Challenge>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, you don't, well, uh, I'll let you know a secret maybe later, but I, I'll, de okay, I'll definitely, cool. you'll be the first person to receive the coffee beans for sure. All right. All right. All right. Thanks so much for your time, man. I'll, uh, I'll easy, definitely buddy. look forward to having you again. Yes, for sure. We'll see you around. I hope you like the video. And if you like content like this, the internet is telling me you may like video over here or over here. But if you just in general like to hear about cybersecurity and future tech on a weekly basis, we do that every week on this video channel. So feel free to subscribe wherever it is. But I'll see you in the next video. Peace.